My name is Father Ryan Hall, and I'm a priest at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Brookings, South Dakota. A follower of some of the videos that I have done in the past that are available both on YouTube and on my blog and elsewhere has requested that I do a bit on liturgical colors and their meanings. And this is indeed a great topic because liturgy, at its best, does teach us about God and theology and church history in many different ways. Liturgy teaches us all of these things, not just through the traditional sermon by the preacher up in the pulpit on Sunday, but the church teaches us to worship and experience God through all of the senses of the human being, the human body. We are not just coming to church on Sunday and listening to a sermon, but we're singing praises and being taught the faith through the music and the hymn texts. We touch the water in the baptismal font and reminded of our baptism. We feel the pages of the prayer book or the hymnal in our hands. We taste the bread and wine at communion, like it says in the Psalms, taste and see that the Lord is good. And of course we smell the liturgical incense and we see. We see the faith taught in icons and stained glass windows. We see the liturgical procession into and out of the church. We see the sacred vessels of plate and chalice for communion. And of course, one of the main visual images that we perceive, though very subtly, is the use of liturgical colors. The liturgical colors that are used in the, in the primary worship space of parishes are almost so sublime as to be subliminal. Most people miss the nuance of what is meant and experienced through the colors that we use with the different church seasons. I have talked before about the fact that the church does not do things like normal culture often does things. Uh, this is both good and bad. Uh, we have a calendar, but our church calendar does not start on January 1st, nor does it end on December 31st. Our traditional church year begins with the season of Advent. Advent uh, comes from the Latin word, which means arrival. Usually on Sundays during Advent, we get stories about the Annunciation of Mary, the birth of John the Baptist. And sometimes we also get very apocalyptic readings about Jesus' second coming or second Advent. In Advent, we prepare for the mysteries of Christ's birth so that we may fully appreciate the meaning when the next season of Christmas comes announcing the birth of the Messiah, but we also prepare ourselves for Jesus' second coming. The color violet has often been used traditionally for Advent, uh, as the purplish color has long been associated with royalty. As we await the coming of the king, we put out the king's colors to remind us that he is coming soon. Of course, as you probably know, the Christmas season begins on December 25th and goes for 12 days, hence the traditional 12 days of Christmas. Christmas celebrates the incarnation of God becoming man dwelling among us. Christmas is also referred to as various things like the Feast of the Nativity. The color white, or sometimes cloth of gold, depending on local custom, is the color that is believed to be the color of purity and light, and so white is often used on these highest holy days of the year, like Christmas. The church then moves to the season of Epiphany, which celebrates Jesus' adult life on this earth, and marks the revelation of God's gift of himself to all men. The word epiphany means to show or manifestation, and it has become a time for emphasis on the missionary work of the church, a task where we continue to show forth this manifestation to all. Epiphany also uses the liturgical white as the reminder of God's holiness and purity. And epiphany lasts until Ash Wednesday in the Lenten season, and Lent is a time with both joy and sorrow during the year of the season that the church proclaims and remembers and responds to the atoning death of Christ. Lent culminates at Holy Week, beginning with Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and we continue on to remember the passion and death of Christ the Lord. Lent also uses a purple color, though a darker shade, for the same reason that Advent uses violet. Violet is the color of royalty as we wait for Christ's resurrection. We put out the king's colors to remind us to wait for the king. Purple is also the color of penitence. When a priest hears confessions, he is supposed to traditionally wear purple. Lent is a time of penitence as we prepare for Easter. And Advent, I might add, was also originally a season of fasting and penitence before Easter, hence the liturgical violet. 
though that color has fallen away in many denominations due to the trappings of the secular Christmas that now assail our shopping-obsessed culture, beginning at Halloween or even earlier. And for this reason, many Protestant churches have made it fashionable to use blue for Advent, and not the violet-purple color, uh, to divorce it from the more somber and penitential feel of Lent, though that was what Advent was originally designed as. For those from the more Catholic end of the Christian church, either Roman Catholic or High Church Anglicans, blue has traditionally been reserved uh, as the color of Mary Our Lady, so to use a more Marian type of blue for Advent is somewhat odd. However, many of the Advent lessons leading up to Christmas, however, do have to do with Mary. Stories having to do with the Annunciation, or Mary meeting Elizabeth, the trip to Bethlehem, etc., and so I would argue that Marian blue is appropriate if one holds a special reverence for Mary, because such stories of Advent is really the story of Mary in its own sense. Of course, going back to Lent, uh, Holy Week, purple is used throughout. A uh, traditional blood-red liturgical color is often used during Holy Week to remind us of Christ's death and his blood shed upon the cross for our redemption. Liturgical black, a color that used to be used for adult funerals, though it was no longer used as such in most denominations, can be used on Good Friday as well, to remember Christ's death and his descent among the dead. And then, of course, comes Easter, where we remember the resurrection of our risen Lord, the highest day of the entire Christian year, where Jesus defeats death in the grave and makes the whole creation new. Ascension Day is 40 days after Easter, and after the resurrection, Christ appeared among his disciples for 40 days, after which he ascended into heaven, and it is celebrated to affirm that Jesus Christ is Lord of all times and in all places, and the color for both Easter and Ascension Tide is also white, for reasons already mentioned. And then, of course, Easter and Ascension Tide end with the Feast of Pentecost, commemorating the birth of the early church and the giving of the Holy Spirit with the tongues of fire, as we read about in the book of Acts. The color used in worship for that day is ideally a fire red, not a blood red, though many churches cannot afford a full set of fire red vestments and altar hangings of that color, um, particularly if they're only going to be used for one Sunday of the year. So usually a blood red is used, but ideally it's a fire red to remember the fire of Pentecost. And of course Pentecost kicks off the second semester of the church season, that extends from the seventh Sunday after Easter to the beginning of Advent, when the cycle begins all over again. This season was referred to as the season after Pentecost, and used to be referred to as the Trinity season, hence the liturgical green color. Trinity is the longest season of the year, and the color green is used to commemorate the Trinity, the eternal God, the infinite God, and also represents our growth and understanding of the teachings of Christ in the early church that are often read at this time of the year during Sunday worship. And I will close this little learning segment about liturgical colors to bring us back to Advent, which we are in the middle of as of this recording. For astute listeners, you have no doubt caught that there is one liturgical color that you may have noticed in some of these pictures that I have yet to discuss, and this liturgical color is present in both Lent and Advent. In Advent, it is the color of the third Sunday for Lent, the fourth Sunday. And the color I refer to is, of course, the rose color. You may have mistaken it for pink. During the days of the Middle Ages, when Advent and Lent were both seasons of severe fasting, and by severe fasting, I don't mean the you know modern customs of giving up something for Lent like chocolates or coffee, but severe fasting where people wouldn't even eat for days at a time. People were so severe, in fact, that there were problems of people literally starving themselves to death. And so the Pope instituted a Sunday where pink, or rose, was used to remind people that Advent and Lent were not the heinous, awful times that you starved yourself silly in utter austerity, but as a time where there was joy to be had, that people for a day could relax their fast and begin a bit of remembrance that these penitential seasons were not dread times of total austerity where a god up on a mountain somewhere who was going to zap you, but times of joy, the times where we remembered that Jesus is drawing near, in fact, is very near to you. And so I leave you with that image of the liturgical rose color. May your Advent journey 
bring you nearer to Christ, and may you with eager and joyful anticipation await his coming in glory. May God bless you, and thank you for listening.